Good morning. I'm going to call to order this meeting of the Monroe County Board of Commissioners. It's Wednesday, July 27th, and we will begin with our public statement read by Commissioner Githens. Good morning. We, the Monroe County Board of Commissioners, renew our commitment to welcome and protect the rights of all people, regardless of age, race, color, creed, disability, sexual orientation, gender, gender identity, marital status, economic status, and national origin. And we affirm the right of every person to live peacefully and without fear. And we will fight and resist at every step discrimination and harmful policies, whatever their source. We also stand in support of our county public school systems, both RBB and MCCSC. Thank you so much. Next, we will move on to department updates. Uh, first, we will hear from the health department, our health administrator, Lori Kelly. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Uh, so just a few updates. COVID cases have been fluctuating up and down for the past five days. The CDC community level is low. The health department and the public health clinic have free tests available. The public health clinic has vaccines for all ages. An important appointment can be made by calling 812-353-3244. All right, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? Um, yeah, I heard yesterday on the news that monkeypox, uh, the numbers are the highest in the United States of any country right now in the world. Anything to report or anything we should know about with, in regard to monkeypox? Yes, I can speak to that. So we are working closely with the state. Uh, this includes um, testing and vaccination. We do have procedures in place for those needs. My team is in place and we are ready to respond. All right, thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yeah, is the vaccine for monkeypox something that's recommended for pretty much everyone? No, not at this time. That is not something that they're looking at. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and just a, a quick question about uh, COVID. Um, should, uh, how, how do people report a positive test? Is it to their doctors, their healthcare provider? Yes. So if um, there's no formal system right now for the home test results, um, what folks can do is contact their doctor uh, if they have a positive home test. Um, the doctor can then decide at that point to follow up with an in-office test um, that's going to then be uh, reported into the system. Great. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank your you. time today. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Next, we have uh, Monroe County Prosecutor Erica Oliphant. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm actually here today as the president of the Substance Use Disorder Awareness Commission, and Ms. Purdy recommended that this was an appropriate time to present our 2021 annual report. So as you know, pursuant to Ordinance 2020-01, SUDAC um, serves an advisory role to assist the government of Monroe County in planning and organizing educational community conversations throughout the year. Uh, including at least a biannual substance use disorder awareness summit uh, regarding substance use, where to collaborate with stakeholders, gather community information relating to substance use issues and concerns, and report our activities to the Board of Commissioners on at least an annual basis. So this serves as our, our annual report. Um, in terms of community conversations last year, uh, we did uh, host two virtual lunch and learn programs. Um, first in August of 2021, we brought Robert Suarez to give a presentation titled uh, Substance Use in America, Connecting the Dots. Uh, Mr. Suarez is the Director of Outreach and Community Advocacy at North Carolina Urban Survivors Union in Greensburg, North Carolina. And uh, so they, that organization works to build power among low income people impacted by drug use. So this was an hour long webinar style presentation uh, focused on ending the stigma of substance use disorder. In December of 2021, we partnered 
with the Responding to the Addictions Crisis Grand Challenge and the IU Center for Rural Engagement to present a panel uh, called Substance Use Disorder in Rural Indiana. Uh, we did ha have a moderator, April Fuller, who is the Executive Director of Research Communications at IU and featured three panelists, uh, Cass Botts uh, from Healthy Hoosier Communities at IU Center for Rural Engagement, Freya Perry, Associate Vice Pro Provost for Social Science Research at IU, and Andrea D. Genota, who's the director of IUPUI Echo Center and Center for Public Health Practice at IU Richard M. Fairbanks School of Public Health at IUPUI. So this hour-long webinar style presentation uh, provided a conversation about the impact of stigma, barriers to treatment, harm reduction strategies, and building resilience in our communities. Uh, so we are continuing that practice in 2022 of hosting Lunch and Learn Opportunities. And I'd just like to take one second to promote one that we have coming up. Um, we have one with, here's our little flyer for Sam Canones. He was coming. He's going to do a virtual Lunch and Learn and a webinar style for the hosted by the Substance Use Disorder Awareness Commission on August 30th, beginning at 11.30 a.m., if you are interested in that, you can email me at eolephant at co.monroe.in.us. I'll make sure to provide you with the Zoom link for that. Um, that is in advance of an in-person event that the Substance Use uh, Disorder Awareness Commission is also uh, financially supporting and, and partnering to, to bring to the community. Um, we also did a, a public health awareness campaign, we hired a graphic designer to generate some posters to help um, reduce stigma. So we've got some lovely designs. Uh, there are five different options um, and we are working to distribute those around the community. Uh, we also pr produced a brochure. Um, the brochure contains a list of uh, treatment and other supports for those experienced substance use. Uh, disorder, chaotic substance use in our community. And so um, anyone who's interested in displaying either our brochures or our posters can get those materials at the commissioner's office. Um, we also uh, conducted some advocacy efforts specifically uh, in December of 2020. We uh, sent a letter to the mayor's office in response to Mayor John Hamilton's official statement regarding the removal of people um, camping in Seminary Park. Uh, essentially, we were taking issue with um, language that implied that syringes are dangerous to those who are using the park. And uh, we asked that the mayor's office more carefully word future communications to avoid contributing to stigmatization of people in our community. Um, in January of 2021, we also wrote a letter to members of the House of Representatives um, to the Public Health Committee in support of House Bill 1203, uh, which extended the syringe exchange program. That bill ultimately passed. And so uh, the sunset provision for the syringe services program is now July of 2023. Um, we also, in September, we partnered with the Board of Commissioners, Indiana Center for Recovery, and the Monroe County Health Department, and others to host the third annual Paint the Town Purple event to kick off National Recovery Month. Uh, we will be hosting a similar event this year, September 2nd, uh, at the Courthouse Lawn. So uh, please look forward to that event. We're going to have some food trucks and some other activities to create connection and reduce stigma associated with substance use. Um, so that's a, a brief summary of the activities that we had in 2021 as a commission. Um, I would like to thank all of the members of the Substance Use Disorder Awareness Commission past and present, but specifically want to give a shout out to um, last year's president, Jean Kapler, who uh, works for RHI Resource Facilitation Program. I think um, uh, many people in the community probably know Jean's work with uh, brain, traumatic brain injury and um, some of the educational efforts she's had um, with regard to treating those injuries and helping people uh, recover. So I just want to give a shout out to her because she was our leadership last year. 
Um, and finally, just say that uh, we are overdue for a summit. And so to that end, the commission has began discussions on a potential summit for 2023. So that concludes my 2021 report. There is also a written report. Uh, if the commissioners have not received that, please let me know. I'd be happy to supply that to you. And if there are any questions, please let me know. All right, thank you so much, Ms. Oliphant. Comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? Well, I, I am a regular attendee at the uh, SUDAC meeting. So um, I do wanna uh, repeat the fact that Sam Quinones, who is a nationally known author, um, is gonna be available at a Lunch and Learn on um, August the 30th. And this will be sort of a kickoff to when we um, have Mr. Quinones here in town. Uh, on September 13th at Buzzkirk Tumley. For anybody who wants to prep themselves before his um, either lunch and learn or his arrival here, um, he's the author of Dreamland. And also um, his latest book is The Least of Us. These are books that focus on different substance use disorder issues uh, and are very, very pertinent to what's going on locally. In fact, um, he includes um, interviews in his latest book that it took place here in Monroe County. So I think what he has to offer is very, very relevant. All right, thank you. Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I'm also very excited about Sam Quinones coming here. It's, it's going to be, I think, a very useful event. He has actually spent time studying the Bloomington or Monroe County community. Um, so I think he'll, what he has to say will be particularly pertinent to us. Yeah, and and uh, just a shout out to thank you and to thank everyone on the committee for all their hard work uh, throughout the year um, and making a real difference in our community. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it, commissioners. All right. Is there anyone else that has a department update? Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium. <laughs> okay, seeing none, we'll move on to public comments. Uh, this item uh, is for um, the public to make commentary on uh, items that are not on our agenda. Each person is limited to a total of three minutes. Uh, at two minutes and 30 seconds, you will hear a tone. And when you hear that tone, that means you have 30 seconds to wrap up your statement. Uh, and um, the same three minute time limit applies to each of our agenda items as well. Uh, so please. Good morning, commissioners. This is Christopher M.G. from the Greater Bloomington Chamber of Commerce. Uh, today, I want to talk about the importance of citizen involvement in county boards, commissions, and committees. These avenues of input for residents are instrumental in making our democracy work. What these bodies allow for is citizens with an interest, a background, and a specific area to focus on that issue, provide real value for our elected officials. With limited capital of time and staff, it's vital to have these volunteer entities support the type of deep dives that is not practical for our elected officials. The recommendations go a long way in making policy. Right now, I wanna push the members of the chamber and any Monroe County citizen interested in outcomes of our community to consider serving on a county board commission or committee. The time commitment is neg negligible a few hours a month. There are multiple vacancies right now. The Animal Management, Board of Zoning, Community Corrections, Environmental Commission, Ordinance Review, Human Rights, Plan Review, Substance Use Disorder Awareness, the Women's Commission. Uh, some of those do have specific requirements you can look online for. Uh, there's three particular I want to highlight quickly. Uh, the Affordable Housing Advisory Commission uh, with several vacancies to address an important issue that's vital to our long-term prospects of uh, equitable and equitable community. We have a lack of housing, especially the affordable variety. The plan commission, which reviews development proposals such as rezones and subdivisions, this body must move toward a simpler path to allow a greater number of developments to address this housing shortage that we have. 
The Food and Beverage Tax Advisory Commission uh, is the purpose to construct and operate uh, the convention center or economic development projects of such. The expansion of the convention center remains long overdue with a real benefit to our local eatery patrons who are paying into this tax. Finally, I want to encourage our commissioners to adhere to their responsibility to deliver due diligence in filling these vacants as qualified applicants come in. I thank you for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. MG. And that's a good time for me to step in and remind folks that we do have a number of vacancies on boards and commissions, including the Board of Zoning Appeals and the Plan Commission. So please go to co.monroe.in.us and apply. Uh, it appears we don't have anyone else in the uh, the Nat U Hill room to offer comment. Uh, we do have Mr. Shelton on Zoom. Good morning, commissioners, and welcome back. Uh, I'm speaking today on behalf of CASA, a court appointed special advocates. There are presently 39 children waiting for a CASA to become available to be assigned to their case. These kids desperately need a caring adult to be their voice in the courtroom. After all, they have done nothing wrong. Their parents, are the problem and why they're in the court system and uh, they need an adult to be their voice and to help the court know how their case is going. Monroe County causes in need of advocates and also child visit monitors. The child visit monitor program is a wonderful way to get involved with the CASA program if you don't have enough time to dedicate and take on a full case. The child visit monitor helps the CASA staff monitor the uh, cases of children on the wait list. They basically visit the child monthly and fill out a short questionnaire. This helps the, chat, the staff determine the order in which to assign CASAs as they become available. We will have training, <clears throat> excuse me, for both advocates and child visit monitors in just a few weeks in September. The child visit monitor training is a total of nine hours on three nights, September 12th, 14th, and 15th. And then the uh, vol standard volunteer training will be September 19th through October 10th, Monday, Wednesdays, and Thursday for both kinds of training from 5.30 to 8.30. So you can get more information about being a CASA or being a child visit monitor by calling the uh, CASA office at 333-2272 and talking to a staff member, or you can go on the uh, Count the uh, CASA website, MonroeCountyCASA.org. Click on the volunteer link and you will find details. Uh, you will find the application, which you can fill out online. And uh, this application will apply to being either a CVM or a CASA and uh, get that turned in. And so the staff can interview you. You can get uh, your background check done and everything before training starts in September. So please think about that. We really need volunteers to help with these and to help uh, Judge Galvin and Judge Harvey know what are going on with the cases, how the children are doing, are their parents doing what they've been directed to do in order to work toward reunification or not. And the goal of getting the child into a permanent situation for the rest of their life as soon as possible. Thank you for the chance to spread that word. Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Okay, uh, next we have um, uh, approval of minutes, please. Move approval of the minutes from July 6, 2022. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Any comments, corrections, edits? I don't have any. Okay. Uh, all those in favor of approving the minutes for July 6, 2022, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3 0. Uh, next item, please. Move approval of the claims docket. This is accounts payable July 27th, 2022, and payroll for July 15th, 2022, as well as July 29th, 2022. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, Mr. Miller, good morning. Tell us all about it, please. Good morning, commissioners. The total for claims was $9,524,829.09. As you notice, there were approximately 89 pages in this uh, large claims docket. So I'll try to focus on the five largest claim items, starting with uh, local income tax distribution for July, which was $3,604,857.34. And 
and of that amount, $752,140.15 were specifically for public safety local income tax, $1,530,700.99 was for Monroe County Treasurer for July quarterly self-insurance, $939,074.25 was for milestone contractors uh, for 12.5 millimeter surface on Fish, Wisnand, Mount Carmel, Low Gap, Howard, Starnes Roads, as well as on bridge approaches and culverts. Uh, $543,530.47 was for Anthem Inc. for uh, primarily claims, premiums, and fees. And finally, for accounts payable, $357,556.21 was for food and beverage tax distribution for June. As far as payroll, the total was $3,746,122.67. The 7-15-22 check date had a total of $1,881,932.04, and it contained health savings account, employer contribution two of two, which resulted in a higher payroll related claims or indirect costs. And the 729 check date had a total of $1,864,190.63. And we issued uniforms for our sheriff jail and highway, which resulted in higher direct payroll costs for that particular check date. All right, thank you for all of that information, Mr. Miller, we appreciate it. Comments, questions, Commissioner Gibbons? Well, first of all, I, uh, I'm glad to see Mr. Miller looking so much better. And um, congratulations you. on the birth of your little girl. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. Commissioner Jones? I'd just like to repeat the congratulations. Yeah, yeah, congratulations. <laughs> and um, I do have a question. Um, the um, revised accounts payable claims docket does include the last. Um, the last minute uh, Duke uh, check that we had uh, uh, an emergency claim for? Is That's that correct? correct, yes. Okay, thank you, appreciate mm -hmm. it. All right, thank you. Let's see if there's any public comment. Just come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room or raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Let's see none. All those in favor of approving the claims docket accounts payable July 27th, 2022 and payroll July 15th and July 29th, 2022 signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. I will note for the record, we've received reports from the clerk for June 2022 and from the treasurer also for June of 2022. And now we are on to new business, please. Move approval of positive link agreement for loss to care services and disease intervention specialist workspace, fund name, loss to care and STD strengthening prevention, fund numbers 8183 and 8112 in an amount not to exceed $35,181. Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, Ms. Kelly, tell us all about it, please. Yes, thank you. So this is a uh, renewal of an agreement. This does also include now workspace for two additional disease interventional specialists. Um, one of the um, one of the workspaces is also going to be able to be in Terre Haute, um, which is going to help kind of free up some of the staff um, in in our Monroe County Department. Um, and this is just related to the loss to care grant. So getting out and getting with outreach efforts. All right, thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? Uh, this is for a three county um, cooperative, right? Yes. Okay. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't, thank you. Thank you for all the information. So this is a grant amount to not to exceed 35,181. Um, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Um, raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium in Net U Hill. Okay, seeing none. All those in favor of approving the positive link agreement for loss to care services and disease intervention, intervention specialist workspace signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Next item, please. Move approval of the Indiana Department of Health grant agreement, fund name, lead case management, 
fund number 8115 in an amount of $49,751.05. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Ms. Kelly, tell us all about this one, please. Yes, so the Indiana Department of Health has awarded these funds to the health department. This is to help in lowering Indiana's elevated blood lead level threshold. This does include case management and environmental services. All right, thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? Uh, I, I've been in touch with Ms. Kelly about some of this that um, this will, it looks like it covers 24 different households, which uh, while they may identify one child as having elevated blood levels or lead levels, um, that this would benefit any other child in that, the home and also benefit any other future family that lives in, the, in that particular housing. So um, I think it's got more than just the immediate effect that would occur in the next two years, but I'm, so I'm glad to see this. Yeah. Commissioner Jones. Yeah, I just think people need to keep an awareness of the dangers of lead and especially what it can do to children. I was rather pleased to see that there are only 24 households, um, but it'd be nice if there were none. Yeah, that's true, true. All right, let's see if there is any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. Seeing none, uh, all those in favor of approving the Indiana Department of Health grant agreement on lead case management signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Next item, please. Move approval of the 2022-2023 Adult Protective Services contract, fund name, Adult Protective Services, fund number 9112, in an amount of $275,866.79. Second. We have a motion and a second, and we have Ms. Hamlin from the prosecutor's office to tell us all about it. Good, Good morning. morning, Commission. Good morning, commissioners. Um, thank you for seeing us this morning. This is a request for signature on our annual contract to keep our adult protective services funded. Um, our adult protective services uh, investigates the allegations of abuse and neglect against endangered adults in Morgan, Monroe and Owen counties. And this contract will allow that project to keep running. Great, thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? It's sad that we need to have something like this, but I'm glad that glad we, we have people like Beth to take care of it. Absolutely. Commissioner well, Jones? I would say that Wendy Scott's the one that's taking care of it. I'm just <laughs> here to get the money flowing. But... <laughs> Commissioner Jones? Yes. Um... I just want to comment on, well, there are a huge number of services that are offered to endangered adults. And um, this is an incredibly important program. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that um, we have this program and I'm sad that we need it, but um, it's really, they do great work. So thank you for that. All right, uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the Net U Hill room. Ms. Oliphant, did you wanna comment? Uh, I'm just really here for backup. I will say that I serve on the uh, State Indiana Prosecuting Attorneys Council APS committee as the chair of that committee. And we have recently met with FSSA uh, like leadership to try to ensure that um, this program remains uh, re robustly funded and a priority for the state. So um, that's all I'll add to that. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, seeing no other public comments, uh, all those in favor of approving the 2022-2023 Adult Protective Services contract signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Next item, please. Move approval of MPI Plumbing Inc. consultation proposal, fund name, county general, fund number 1,000 in an amount of $5,000. Second. We have a motion and we have a second and we have Mr. Kreider, our maintenance and fleet manager here to tell us all about it. Uh, 
adopted to the solar installation and the expansion of the existing solar installation to the area to the facility. The rate of one source is $100 per hour per installment, and the minimum is $25,000. All right. Thank you. Comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? No, I'm glad we're doing this. Commissioner Jones? Yeah, as a member of the Environmental Committee, I just want to say that we're all very excited about this and uh, hope that, that it'll turn out that we can do a lot. Yeah, um, yeah, and I appreciate this. Um, we are going to be getting the um, data from this consultant once the contract is approved and um, we'll use this to inform our report um, as ARPA teams to potentially fund some or all of this, and hopefully it's more all than some, but uh, they were very thorough and they did a great job, so it's good to have this finally completed. All right, uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the MPI Plumbing Inc. Uh, consultation proposal signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. All right, next item, please. Move approval of the ratification of Toshiba Business Solutions Lease Agreement, fund name, county general, fund number 1,000, in an amount of 5,000 $877 for five years plus excess printing charges. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Mr. Crone. Good morning, commissioners. Greg Crone, technical services director. Took me a minute there. <laughs> Thank you for uh, joining me on my maiden voyage from this side of things. So uh, first thing I have uh, with the highway garage uh, expansion of the office space, uh, to relocate the staff from the showers building to the garage. We just need a, an additional copy or added to our fleet. This is a, a five-year lease agreement with Toshiba to provide the uh, color copier to, for that purpose. Thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Gittins? Well, if, if the picture of, of the copier that was included in the, the uh, quote is anything to go by, it looks like it's something you could drive. It's so big. <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Jones? Yeah, is this a copier that will easily print on both sides of the page? Absolutely, absolutely. D duplexing is a function of this. It's a color copier, but that option can be uh, shut off so that we're not doing color copies all the time, black and white only. So standard with pretty much every copier we have in our fleet, so yeah. It would be nice if people would make more of an effort to use the duplex function. Right. Uh, thank you so much for this. Um, and let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Uh, raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium in NatU Hill. See none. Um, and Ms. Ridge took notes on that duplexing thing. Yes. <laughs> uh, all those in favor of ratifying the Toshiba Business Solutions Lease Agreement signify by saying aye. Uh, Aye. Aye. Motion carries 3-0. Next item, please. Move approval of ratification of soft choice agreement renewal, fund name, cumulative capital, fund number 1138, and an amount of $54,581.55. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Mr. Crone, tell us all about this one, please. Okay. This one's pretty straightforward. Uh, our existing agreement for our Sophos antivirus software uh, for the county was getting ready to expire. So this is a simple renewal of that same agreement that we had previously. Uh, extends for a period of three years at a cost of $62.49 per unit for a total cost of $49,992. All right. So, but we have a different amount on here. So let's. I'm sorry, I stand corrected. I printed off the wrong sheet. The amount is fifty four thousand five eighty one fifty five. There we go. I was going to say. Apologies. I thought I saw that. It didn't get a change number. on the agenda for gotcha. me. My apologies. That's okay. Uh, no, I was going to say because we we talked about changing that um, yes. when the agenda was in uh, yeah draft form. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? 
well, with all the malware and the attempts at, at disruption, shall we say, uh, I'm glad that you've taken this, this step. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't, thank you. Thank you for working on this. And let's see if there's any public comments. Come up to the podium in that hill room or raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Seeing none, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of ratifying the soft choice agreement to renewal, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Next item, please. Move approval of AT&T change order to upgrade phone system hardware. Fund name, cumulative capital, fund number 1138 in an amount of $9,357.94. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please tell us all about this one, Mr. Crone. All right. Um, the current routing hardware we have for our VoIP phone system in the courthouse was only designed to handle approximately 120 devices. We've exceeded that by almost double. So that's resulted into phone outages periodically through the courthouse with drop calls and the phones rebooting. Uh, this piece of hardware will expand us to a thousand units. Uh, I asked, did ask AT&T if there was an option somewhere in between going that far. <laughs> there is not. That's the next step, unfortunately. So uh, this will provide us ample space. We will never exceed that amount. Uh, the cost of this quote also includes um, the installation and configuration of that hardware by AT&T. I weighed out the time it was going to take and with what they're able to provide. And if there's any issues, then they're responsible to get those corrected. So it was cost effective for the a little over a thousand dollars to have them do so. So yeah. uh, the total cost on this is nine thousand three hundred fifty-seven dollars and ninety-four cents. Right. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Githens. No. Commissioner Jones. No, I don't. Yeah, it is amazing that we use phones that much when I feel like we don't. <laughs> it's right. funny. All right, uh, but thank you for attending to this. Um, Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the NetU Hill room. All right, seeing none, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of approving the AT&T change order to upgrade the phone system hardware, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Thank you. Thank you very much, Commissioner. Next item, please. Move approval of Bledsoe, Rigard, Cooper, James, Land surveying, fund name, county general, non reverting parks, fund numbers 1000, 1178, and 1179 in an amount not to exceed $5,000. Second. We have a motion and a second, and we have Ms. Whitmer here to tell us all about it. Our parks director, good morning. Yes, the park board in county legal thinks it's wise. Can you pull the <laughs> microphone down a little bit? Thank How's you. this? Much better. Thank you. I could probably yell louder than this microphone, but anywho, <laughs> um, County Legal and Monroe County Parks and Recreation Board believe it's wise to have a stake survey of the easement that pertains to the Oshkosh property with the Cars Farm Greenway. This is so we can provide proper maintenance and tree care in this area. We have a neighbor who is requesting some trees be taken down, and we don't know if there are trees or there are trees. Etc. So everyone thinks it's the best course of action. Okay. Right. Thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Githens? No, I heard about this at the last Parks Board meeting. So, Commissioner Jones? Yeah, it's very unfortunate that the neighbor is wanting to take the trees out, which I'm sure help keep the trail a much nicer place. And some of these trees may not be in the best health. So, <laughs> okay. Thank you for working on this. Um, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. See, no, we'll come back for a vote. A vote. All those in favor of approving the contract with Bledsoe, Rieger, Cooper, James for land surveying, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3 0. Thank you. Next item. Move approval of E and B paving LLC for addendums for Karst Farm Greenway, fund names, next level trails, and 2017 geo bond, fund numbers 9107 and 4810. 
Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Please tell us all about this. Yes, this is actually a very uh, easy request to understand. It's actually one addendum for four agreements that we have signed in the past. We just need to extend the contract date and the project completion date to September 30th, 2022. Due to the railroad situation, uh, we just want to make sure everyone's on the same page and we think we need a little more time. Great. Thank you. Comments, questions? Commissioner Giffens. No, this is just to ensure that it gets done correctly. So I, I'm in favor of this. Commissioner Jones. Do you know if people are beginning to use that section of the trail, even though it's not officially open? We have a closed sign on that section of it. So we do not encourage people to use that section of the trail. And it also has gravel down. So you can't miss that you're not on the trail any longer. We do have signage. Um, and we will also close that portion of the trail when they're working on the railroad. So the trail will be closed. Some people may not like that, but it's the best course of action. Yeah, thank you. That makes sense. Uh, thank you for doing this. And I and this is not much of an extension. So I concur that this is a smart idea. Make sure it's done right. Uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the NetU Hill room. All right, seeing them, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of approving the addendum for Karsh Farm Greenway with e &B paving, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Next item, please. Move approval of resolution 2022-19, declaring surplus real estate. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Cockrell, tell us all about it, please. Yes, uh, this property was donated to us along with the corridor that is currently the profile parkway between uh, the old GE plant, Curry Pike, to uh, Gates Drive. Uh, when the we were discussing with the owner of the property, there was an intent at the same time to to build a roadway uh, from that down to Jonathan Drive. Um, that did not go with that project because of the cash flow and the need to keep funds for the Vernal, bike, Vernal Pike connector, which we have a considerable amount of federal funds for. So in order to give assurance that we would have the capability of funding our portion of that project, uh, that that roadway was not uh, constructed. Um, further discussing with the property owners to the south um, it, that would be required to build that roadway, they weren't very excited about it. Um, so we have an opportunity to return that property to the, the to the not the actual person who donated, but to the, their successor and in interest. Um, and they are also being generous enough to donate uh, additional right away so we could build that Vernal Pike extension. Um, and we we kind of looked at the numbers and that they're about even on what would be a value for both of those. So this is simply returning the property to the group who currently owns the, the surrounding property so they can make use of it for a roadway we do not anticipate to build, uh, and at least not anytime soon. Um, this did go to the county council last night because it is a conveyance of real estate over $1,000. They approved uh, this as well. All right. Thank you so much. Thank Comments, you. questions? Commissioner Githens? No. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Uh, this makes sense. Um, I appreciate the information and um, seems like an easy thing to complete. Uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Uh, come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room or raise your hand on the Zoom screen. And see none, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of resolution 2022-19 declaring surplus real estate signified by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, please. Move approval of purchase agreement for certain Fullerton Pike real property, fund name and number to be determined in an amount of $10,020,000 plus closing costs. Second. We have a motion and a second. Mr. Cockrell, please tell us all about this one. Well, I'm, I'm gonna start with the actual document itself and then I'll kind of go into a, kind of the background behind it and why we're doing it. Uh, this is a purchase agreement for a little over 87 acres um, located at the intersection of Fulton Pike and I-69. And, and if it's okay with you, I think TSD has a map that shows um, the property we're looking at. Uh, this agreement is, is for the purchase of that property. Um, the purchase 
is to be completed this year, but there are a lot of contingencies with that purchase, which include um, getting the adequate zoning for the use we want, as well as looking at the phase one environmentals and a site assessment, um, checking the, the drainage in the area, um, just a lot, a lot of different variables that we really need to nail down in order to make it happen. The contract currently in the packet is one that we had sent to the owner current owner, they came back with a couple changes. I think one of them is probably worth noting. The rest of them, I, I don't think were substantive. And that is the Fulton Pike on one side of that roadway is a water line. On the other side is a sewer line. And so we're going to have to put that, put that line underneath the road. And I've talked with Lisa about um, that. And I think she, she indicates that we could probably add that to our Fulton Pike, Pike project. Um, one of the attractions to this is that roadway is going to be improved and made made better. And so I think naturally we would want to get that work done before that's done anyway. So that would be an addition to this that they that we would do that for our side. And I think at the same time it would make mm -hmm. sense to do it for the other. Mm -hmm. um, putting one one line each way across that roadway. And so that they connect the property across the street could connect into that. So that's the one real change with this agreement. Um, and that's pretty much the agreement. We've looked at purchase agreements in the past. The rest of it's fairly formulaic. Uh, now I, I'll talk a little bit about the background. And I think uh, it starts um, uh, essentially a, a little over a year ago, we got our criminal justice uh, reports back from our consultants about the current state of our jail and uh, in our criminal justice system as a whole. Um, that report was honest but negative about the current ability to maintain constitutional level of care at our current facility. Um, and so in order for us to avoid having a required build that is overseen by, the, by a federal judge, uh, local leaders, including the commissioners and the council, uh, have decided to kind of let's start planning and let's start deciding to build this in a, in a way that reflects the local community as opposed to uh, federal court requirements. And so that's kind of what kicked this off. Um, the other aspect of that report, and it, and it kind of plays into this as well, is that they were a lot of recommended um, resources that were needed to be added to our current system, whether that's prior to when people get into into trouble with the law or after they get out, after they've served their their penance for that, and um, some things to divert them from ever entering the system. And so, you know, we wanted to make sure that when we looked at ground, that we had enough ground that we could utilize whatever component of that report was was deemed advisable by by the community. So this this ground is much more ground than our current jail. I think when we were looking at, and then we had a committee that included our fleet and building fleet and building manager, uh, the our person at ASI who is kind of manages our, our criminal justice system and I, uh, we were looking at properties. We had a few criteria and, and this was the only property that I recall that checked off all the, it was the only property that checks off all the boxes. One is it was over 40 acres. Uh, two, that it was within city limits so that we could work with city transit to make sure we had uh, adequate uh, bus lines, bus service, transportation services. Uh, the third is that it wasn't, um, there was a buffer between it and any neighborhood. So those were kind of the, the three big ones. There's one more, and I'm forgetting what it is, but those were kind of the, the ones we focused the most on. Um, this property is bordered on the east by um a quarry on the north it's for and if you look at this map wherever there's trees on it that's pretty much a ravine so if it, it, it so it's got a lot of natural buffers to the north and to the east uh, there's an interstate to the west and then the Fulton Pike expansion would, is a will be a major road to the south across the street I think there is one home site but other than that it's pretty much away from any dense population and there are there are buffers there so that's kind of where we're at with this um and we had an initial appraiser appraise the property and it came in at 10 million twenty thousand dollars so we feel that 
comfortable that that number uh, is reasonable. Uh, again, we have to get a second appraisal. There's a contingency for the second appraisal in the agreement. Um, so this is getting us moving forward. Uh, and, it, and I guess the next few agenda items are also tied to this decision. So if this decision is voted no, then we don't have to deal with those. But I hope with our discussions with both the county commissioners and the county council that this is a, a direction that, that we're ready to go with. Right. Thank you so much, Mr. Cockrell. I appreciate the explanation. Uh, Commissioner Gittins, comments, questions? I just hope that we can move through this smoothly and quickly. Commissioner Jones? Yeah, this, this piece of property is really ideal. Um, we looked at a lot of places and none of them were quite as ideal as this. Um, <clears throat> I would like to emphasize that if we don't take this step, it is likely that the feds will come in and require us to build a new jail <clears throat> and they will decide what size it would be. They might well decide what, how it's designed. And this would all happen without public input from our community. Um, so it's really a step that needs to be taken now so that we can create a situation that will allow our criminal justice system to be much more just and effective. Yeah, well, well said. Um, I agree that this is um, an ideal piece of property, um, hospitals nearby as well, which is, which is nice. Um, but yeah, we have to do this. Um, it's, it's a necessity. Uh, the good news is that this uh, piece of property is large enough to accommodate the programs that Mr. Cockrell was referring to, uh, to divert people out away from the criminal justice system or to, and or to ensure that uh, when they are leaving the system, that they have all the skills uh, that they need in order to be a successful Monroe County resident uh, in the future that um, also avoids any more contact with the criminal justice system. So um, I think this is really an ideal piece of property. I appreciate all the work that's gone into uh, looking at all of these various locations that we looked at. Um, I appreciate that hard work. And I know that we have a lot more work to do in the criminal justice reform group uh, as we continue to talk through this. So um, excellent. All right, uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Come up to the podium in the Nat U Hill room or um, you may raise your hand on the Zoom screen and, and TSD, if you could put the Zoom screen back up for us, we'd appreciate that. Thank you so much. Surprisingly. All right, there's no public comments. So um, all those in favor of the purchase agreement for certain Fullerton Pike real property signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Thank you again, Mr. Cockrell, for all your hard work on this. Uh, next item, please. Move oh. approval of DLZ site review agreement for Fullerton Pike property. Fund name, county general, fund number 1,000 in an amount of $9,000. Second. We have a motion and a second. Okay, Mr. Cockrell, tell us all about this. Yes, this is a connection with the last agenda item. I, I guess when we looked at the site, we thought that there was a, a lot of buildable area and and that the site was suitable. This is a site assessment that would confirm those because I think we want to confirm those before we we get too far down the road. Um, and I guess maybe this is a good time to talk about the the timeline that I think that I I am hoping to hit. And I know it's an optimistic timeline is um, to have the property purchased this year and then go immediately into the design and then have uh, then be ready to go out to bid sometime next year so it can be constructed by 2024 2025 I think this initial site assessment is, is fairly critical to making sure that we can meet kind of those kind of design and, and construction timelines so that's what this uh, this agreement is, is for is to kind of give us an initial assessment to make sure yes you should be able to do kind of what you want to do and here are your parameters and here's what's going on so right thank you so much 
Uh, comments, questions? Commissioner Githens. Um, how soon can we expect the report from DLZ on their site review? I don't recall, but about 45 days from when, when we sign it is what's in the agreement. Okay. Um, so, and our, our purchase agreement gives us 90 days to get through these mm -hmm. issues. So we're well within that time frame. Commissioner Jones. No, I don't. Uh, no questions for me. Thank you for um, getting these things, these important things lined up so that we can proceed. Uh, any public comment on this item? Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium in the NatU Hill room. And please give us your name, whether you're a Monroe County resident, and if you would um, limit your comments to three minutes, please. My name is uh, Thomas Guthrie. G-U-T-H-R-I-E. I'm a Monroe, Monroe County resident. If something happens to this situation with the jail property purchase, I have the 43 acres next to the old Ivy Tech. You could get that and that together. You already got buildings. You got 43 acres next to Ivy Tech. Not really much neighborhood around there at all. You're right by 69. It's just a thought on the record. All Thank right. you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. All right. Any other public comment on this item? All right, seeing none, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of approving the DLZ site review agreement for Fullerton Pike property, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Next item, please. Move approval of Enviro Forensics LLC and VET Environmental Site Assessments for Fullerton Pike property. Fund name, County General, fund number 1,000, and an amount of 1,800 for Enviro Forensics and not to exceed 7,000 for Vet Environmental or a total of um, not to exceed of $8,800. Second. We have a motion and we have a second. Uh, Mr. Cockrell, please tell us about this one. Yes, uh, these are uh, two contractors who are, we are looking to do a phase one environmental study of this of the property for. Clearly, we want to know if anything's there, and if so, um, and so we know about it, and that's part of our decision making deliberative process. Uh, the reason the vet environmental uh, agreement is higher is that they are going to give us a, they're going to do a assessment of the drainage, kind of a 10,000 foot assessment to determine whether there's anything there that really causes alarm. It's not going to be the end of the day. Here's how there, there are going to be drainage issues. There's drainage issues on any site, but this is just to determine if there's any major issues and things like that. Um, this sh should be done relatively quickly because if if they find a need or determine there's a need to do a phase two environmental uh, review, and then we will have to get that done within that 90 day window as well. Great. Thank you. That was exactly my question. Commissioner Githens, comments, no. questions? No. I, Commissioner I, Jones? This is an important step. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, and again, thank you for getting these contracts lined up so quickly and, and um, making sure that we're within that time, that window of time that we need to stay within. Uh, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium in the NatU Hill room. See none, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of the agreements with Enviro Forensics LLC and Vet Environmental for Site Assessments of Fullerton Pike signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Thank you so much, Mr. Cockrell. And now we turn to um, some highway and drainage issues. Uh, <laughs> next item, please. Move approval of Beam, Beam Longest NAF LLC agreement for Dillman Road Bridge number 83, fund name cumulative bridge, fund number 1135, in an amount of $511,000. Second. We have a motion and a second, Ms. Ridge. Good morning. Um, so this project was awarded um, in the last NDOT NOFA call, which is a notice of funding availability for fiscal year 2027. Um, the funding covers all the phases of the project, 80% federal funding, 20% local. This is for the design of that bridge. Um, I do want to mention that that bridge will be um, utilized as a pedestrian bridge at a future location in the county. Um, so we will keep that bridge. Um, so if you have any questions. Great. Thank you. 
comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins? Uh, it's pleased to see that um, it's 80% federal funding that comes into this. And But it always amazes me that all this is so far out. We're looking at 2027 for this. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. Uh, that The bridge it's replacing is an antique, isn't it? Yeah, it is pretty much an antique. It's, it's an a antique. maintenance nightmare also. So. <laughs> but it'll be a nice pedestrian bridge. It won't a be absolutely. Excellent. Great. Thank you. I, I love that idea of preserving it. I think that's mm -hmm. fabulous. Absolutely fabulous. All right. Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. Good morning, Randy Mr. Cassidy. Cassidy. Yeah, Randy Cassidy. I just want to comment and thank Lisa and the Highway Department for looking forward to taking that bridge that has been a problem from a car standpoint, automotive, and turning in something that will be an asset to the community and the pedestrian bridge. Yeah. Appreciate you guys for looking at that. Right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Any other public comment on this item? Raise your hand on the Zoom screen. Okay. Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the Beam Longest Neft LLC agreement for Dillman Road Bridge number 83 signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. Next item, please. Move approval of Shrewsbury Supplemental for Baby Creek Road Redesign. Fund name, stormwater, fund number 1197 in an amount of $37,760. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Ridge, please tell us all about this. Um, we um, uh, opened bids on May 18, 2022 for one structure for the Baby Creek Road project. The lowest bid came in at $990,000 for that project. Um, so we, and it was really unawardable um, at a cost of that. Um, so we have gone back to the consultant to do a redesign um, similar to a concrete box beam bridge that we just installed on North Shore Drive. Um, and we believe by the extra design cost of the 37,760, we will rebid it and um, save on the construction cost on that project. Great. Thank you so much. Comments, questions? Commissioner Giffins? No. Commissioner Jones? Yes, I, I was wondering why a concrete box beam wasn't originally planned on. Is there? I think when we looked at this overall project, it was the four or five structures that's listed in this Baby Creek project. Um, and then we were creating or reconstructing the road also to a higher standard. I think we've kind of backed off that a little bit um, just due to the low traffic count um, and the box beams seem to work there. So I think we were just maybe, I don't want to say over engineering, but maybe trying to do a little bit more than what was necessary at the time. Yeah. Thank you. And having, the, having that demonstrated that it works on North Shore Drive is really, really useful. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Um, I appreciate that pivot uh, because that was a lot of money for a very low traffic road. Yeah. Um, yeah, absolutely. All right, let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium. All right, seeing none, all of those in favor of approving the Shrewsbury Supplemental for Baby Creek Road Redesign, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Next item, please. Move approval of Butler, Fairman, and Sufert Inc. Agreement for Pedestrian Improvement Locations. Fund name, local road and street, fund number 1169 in an amount of $32,050. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Ridge, please tell us all about this. So they, uh, this project was originally part of the Karst Greenway extension. Um, and then when Monroe County was lucky enough to receive the next level grant, we changed the direction of this project so we didn't lose the project. Um, so it's actually for seven locations at trail crossings to improve the safety for um, alternative transportation and the traveling motorists for aware, awareness of those crossings. The locations are Dillman Road, Church Lane, Victor Pike, that road, Roger Street, Zenith Drive, and Old Vernal Pike. The construction installation is being covered with 90% of HSIP funds through the MPO. Uh, we've met with both city parks um, and the county parks department. They're very supportive of these uh, pedestrian um, improvements at these locations. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, comments, questions, Commissioner Giffins. Well, since um, Limestone Greenway is one of my favorite places to walk, uh, I appreciate these upgrades. <laughs> yeah. Commissioner Jones. Yes, I had a question. 
<laughs> oh, can you tell me can, what kind of improvements will these be? They're um, flat, like flashing beacons for um, pedestrian crossing. And that's what will determine uh, what type of um, installation they'll be. I know there's different uh, uh, options out there right now where you have the push buttons, then there's also like laser. So um, um, so we'll just look at those options when the design comes back. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you for doing this. This is really important and it's a, it's a necessary amenity. All right, let's see if there's any public comments on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium in the NetU Hill room. Okay. See none, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of approving the Butler Fairman Seaford Agreement for pedestrian improvement locations signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3 0. Item Q. <laughs> we should look at that. <laughs> I know. Move <laughs> approval of Cartograph Software Management Agreement Renewal, Fund Names, MVH, Stormwater and Cumulative Bridge, Fund Numbers 1176, 1135, and 1197 in an amount of $121,459.82 over a three-year term. Second. We have a motion and a second. Ms. Ridge, tell us about this one. So this agreement is for three years. Um, this is for our asset management program. And we've actually been using Cartograph since 1997. Um, this has grown into what we use for our tracking, uh, for inspections, completed work, work requests from the public. Um, so the highway portion, the bridge crew division and the stormwater division all utilize this program. Uh, we split the cost between the three budgets. Um, it's something that we use every single day. Uh, again, it's a good tracking device for us. It's also what we use to um, prepare our asset management plan and our annual report that goes to the state for our MBH funding. All right. Thank you so much. Comments, questions, Commissioner Githens. Well, given how successful Ms. Ridge is at getting all the state funding, I completely support this. <laughs> Commissioner Jones? No, I don't. I don't have any questions either. Thank you for getting this organized. Let's see if there's any public comment on this item. Raise your hand on the Zoom screen or come up to the podium in the Nat U Hill room. All right, seeing none, we'll come back for a vote. All those in favor of approving the Cartograph Software Management Agreement renewal, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. We do have uh, one appointment today. Um, I move that we appoint Melanie Velschlag to the Substance Monroe County Substance Use Disorder Awareness Commission. Um, she is a member of our health department and has been working on issues related to substance use disorders for several years and I think she would be a great addition to this commission. Okay. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Motion carries 3-0. Thank you so much. Um, so a few announcements today. Uh, just a reminder that the Board of Commissioners has office hours. Uh, they are available on Zoom six times per month on different days, different times of the day. Uh, if you have a concern, an idea, um, please join us, uh, one of us via Zoom. Um, it's random. You don't know who you're going to get. Um, <laughs> and uh, join us on Zoom and uh, we'll have a chat. Uh, it's been really a good program so far. I've, I've um, had, some, had some great conversations. Um, also, a reminder that we do have um, uh, openings on boards and commissions including the Board of Zoning Appeals and Plan Commission. So please go to co.monroe.in.us and um, apply um, if you would. And uh, the next uh, Hoosier Hills Food Bank Fresh Food Fridays is going to be the last Friday of August, I believe. Um, and you can call 334-8374 for more information. Pantry 279, uh, Summer Children's Supplemental Food Program, June 4th to August 6th. Visit pantry279.org. Is that right? Okay. Yeah, and, uh, the Hoosier Hills is, is 26. Yes. August 26 for Hoosier Hills. Thank you. Uh, I don't have my phone with me. I'm lost. Um, so uh, there are uh, free COVID test kits available at the um, uh, health department and also COVID testing available at the Monroe County Health Department. Um, um, 
and uh, Monroe County Public Health Clinic as well. So um, please go and uh, get tested if you need it. Um, the next blood drive will be Tuesday, September 6th, 1 to 6, Friday, September 9th, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. These are at Ivy Tech. Thank you, Ivy Tech. If you'd like to make an appointment, please go to redcross.org and sign up. Anything else? <laughs> I just know there's a severe shortage of blood. Um, I keep getting emails every almost every day right now asking for donations. So anything else? No. All right, we do have a work session. So we'll be back at 11.30. And in the meantime, uh, this meeting is adjourned. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.